Uh, hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of the ABCs of CDOs. CDO stands for Collateralized Debt Obligation. I've done several tutorials on different variations of the CDO. I thought it would be useful to summarize them here with a single CDO, but we'll focus on what gives rise to the commonalities and the different types of CDO structure because that explains the different names that we see. There is an alphabet soup of CDOs, but we'll see there's really a lot in common and there's a few differences. So in terms of the key perspectives, the first I would say is the motivation. What motivates the construct of the CDO? Is it a balance sheet CDO? That is, is a bank trying to get a portfolio of loans or bonds off its balance sheet or is it motivated by yield the seeking of extra yield by investors the next key perspective is risk transfer is credit risk transferred with a true sale of assets or is it synthetically transferred with credit default swaps the third perspective, and this gives rise to the alphabet soup, what is the nature of the reference portfolio? Is it physical debt, as in bonds or loans, or is it structured debt? In all cases, for the CDOs that we've looked at, what they all have in common is a group of investors. The investors are not homogeneous. They are issued securities by a special purpose vehicle or entity into layers or tranches. So the investors have different rank. There can be securities issued to the senior layer or senior tranche that is going to be protected by its subordination, mezzanine and equity tranches. So in all cases we've seen that the equity tranche has its own securities issued and it's going to absorb the first defaults from the reference portfolio. So this equity piece is the highest risk and the highest yield. This senior piece has the highest credit quality and the lowest yield. The special purpose vehicle issues securities to these tranches and the investors contribute their initial purchase price. So it's this investor cash that funds the CDO. One of the differences is what motivates the construction of the CDO. We saw that a bank can motivate the construction of a balance sheet CDO by wanting to get loans off its balance sheet. On the other hand, the motivation can come from the investor side where the investors perceive they can earn a higher risk adjusted yield than they can otherwise get and so they'll hire a collateral manager to go out and construct the reference portfolio typically a synthetic portfolio so that's one difference if it starts with the bank trying to get a portfolio off its balance sheet that's a balance sheet CDO if it's motivated by an investors who hire a collateral manager so this would t be an investment bank then it's an arbitrage CDO so the key difference that gives rise to the alphabet soup of CDOs is the nature of the underlying reference portfolio. And these are the assets that generate cash. If we think about the cash flow, the investors, they purchase their securities and that cash will either be deposited with a trustee in the case of a synthetic CDO or it may purchase outright the sale of those assets in the case of a true sale but the investors provide the cash and the cash flow that's generated on an ongoing basis obviously comes from the underlying debt in the reference portfolio so what all of these assets in the reference portfolio have in common is they are income generating asset with the credit risk of default and so generically, in all cases, we can say the investor group, they have purchased the exposure to the credit risk of default on these underlying assets. In return for that, they get the lion's share of the cash flow generated by these underlying income generating assets. And then really, it's just a matter of what's the difference 
what, what different kinds of assets can populate the reference portfolio. We can have loans, in which case we have a collateralized loan obligation. So again, the CLO is a CDO. It's just a flavor or variation of a CDO. These can be bonds, in which case it's a collateralized bond obligation. It can These reference portfolio can consist of asset-backed securities, in which case we have a CDO of asset-backed securities. So now we've gone from what I would call physical assets to structured finance. The reference portfolio can consist of credit default swaps so that we have a synthesized collateralized obligation or collateralized synth synthetic obligation. And finally, we the reference portfolio can consist itself of securities issued by another CDO. So it becomes a participant here in the investor class on another CDO, and so that is a CDO of CDO or a CDO squared. So you can see the underlying assets are almost have an almost infinite variety. This is not an exhaustive list list, but I've divided it into we can have what we might call physical debt, actual outright debt, or structured instruments. And so in terms of the differences we've said, one is the motivation. Is it a balance sheet motivation? Is it a bank trying to remove these loans or bonds from its balance sheet? Or is it motivated by investors who want to seek extra yield so they hire a collateral manager? The next is risk transfer because the essential bargain here is investors have purchased credit risk so that risk can be transferred either by a true sale of these credit sensitive assets to the special purpose vehicle or it can be synthesized with credit default swaps because in, in that the special purpose vehicle sells credit protection to the originator Next, the reference portfolio can buy their physical debt or structured instruments itself. And finally, what I haven't gone into deeply is the CDO can be either partially funded or fully funded. Fully funded means that the investors contribute purchase price such that the collateral here with the trustee could cover the entire set of defaults on the reference portfolio. In other words, all of the credit protection is fully funded by the investor's purchase. And that's probably not as typical as partially funded where the investors are really buying the credit risk and selling credit protection on a part of the reference portfolio such that the other part of the reference portfolio, the super senior tranche, is not funded. So that's a fourth difference. So that's an overall illustration of the different CDO types. This is David Harper, the Bonnock Turtle. I hope that was helpful.